What's up everyone and welcome to Tone of the Artist video. I'm Ola Englund and today I'm gonna venture deep into Arch Enemy's Doomsday Machine. Okay, the Doomsday Machine is for me a very very special album It's what I consider one of the best sounding anti-sneep albums out there uh, Even more so than uh, Dead Heart in a Dead World which is one of my favorite albums But the Doomsday Machine just had something incredibly gritty about it And it had that distinct you know sneep tone you know, I just love the blend of the guitars, bass and drums on that album It just like, it sounded so f***ing good A good thing for me in this case is that I'm an acquaintance of Andy Sneep, the producer engineer And also a little bit of a friend with Michael Amott of Arch Enemy So finding what type of equipment they would be using for this album should have been easy Well, the thing is that I reached out to both of them and they're both not entirely sure what was being used on the album I mean it was 2005 It's over 15 years ago man, just saying You know it's not easy to remember things, I have no idea what I did yesterday for instance But I, I got some information Alright, Michael's saying everything is reamped by Andy Sneep Probably through... <laughs> probably, okay? Probably through his... one of his Rectify racks and a Maxon Overdrive And then I also read somewhere that they were using Crank So I said that to Michael, what about Crank? And he's like, Crank? Yes! <laughs> the Revolution 1! We were using that a lot back in the day I mean, at that time around two, like mid-2000s uh, There were a lot of Swedish bands using Crank and uh, you know, getting sponsorships and whatnot So yes, he also said that they were probably reapping using uh, a Crank Revolution 1 And from Andy Sneep, he says I know we were all getting free crank stuff at the time So it would have been the Revolution Head and the Cab Which had eminent speakers in it But I swapped out for V30s Your guess is as good as mine Well, okay, that gives me a little bit more to work with, I guess There would have been a Tube Screamer involved But I never did the thing with the level all the way up It was always gain around 9 o'clock, tone halfway and level about 1 or 2 o'clock Just so it times that up So I have a Maxon, uh, or it's not a Maxon, it's an Ibanez Tube Screamer TS-808 but basically Maxon made these back in the day I have the overdrive set to uh, 9 o'clock uh, Tone at like half and level at 1, 2, one, two o'clock And I'm using the Crank Rev Illusion Plus I'm also using a Fortin Sewell in the gate, that's just for our pleasure And I'm using this Fortin cab with V30s in it I'm also using an SM57 and a Neumann TLM 102 microphone So I can kind of mix those two microphones to get closer to the desired results For guitar, Michael was using his ESP Ninja that he had back in the day And he had a Seymour Duncan JB and a 59 in the neck I'm using this guitar today, which is the uh, new Dean Tyrant uh, Michael Amott signature guitar, this is the low end model, which is like 350 bucks So not that much to buy Obviously it does not have the Seymour Duncan JB and 59 But I have that on the guitar over here that I'm also going to use, the Dean Select V that I have, which has It had another Seymour Duncan pickup in there, I don't remember which one, but the one I used for the Testament video I've switched that out to a JB now, so it's a JB and 59 right there Holy shit, what I do for you guys, man For the song that I did in the intro of this video, I was using this guitar Because it had the JB in it So I recorded both songs using the Dean Select guitar But we're gonna crank it up <laughs> it's, uh, 
the name is crank of the amplifier. Let's crank it up. <laughs> okay, let's go. The album was tuned to standard C by the way. This guitar came in standard E. I had to file the nut a little bit to be able to fit thicker strings in there. But after that, it's perfectly fine to play uh, C standard on. Okay, I can probably... The, the, the bad thing about these old uh, Ibanez, this is a new Ibanez, but they're using the old LEDs. You can barely see that it's on, but it is on, okay? This is the sound without the Ibanez Tube Screamer. It's pretty heavy. Let's just crank the game. Crank! Oh. Quite muddy, I must say. Let's go back, tighten it up with a tube screamer. I'm broken in C is pretty f brutal, just saying. This particular guitar is bolt-on, like this, and I mean, it's made in China. Grover tuners actually, 18 to 1 tuners, and it's a very inexpensive guitar, and you have to take into account that it's way less than a guitar like this. I kind of like the graphic, you know, I think it's badass. Not sure what the fretboard is, I have to check that out. I guess a maple neck back there. Tunematic bridge, some kind of Dean pickups, these are not his Dean. Uh, pickups, you know, the Michael Amott Dean set. Uh, those one looks like a Seymour Duncan Innovator, but they're not. I'm gonna switch to the Dean Select guitar, which has the pickups that were used on the album. Hello. That's pretty chunky, can you hear that? Let's try the sweep thing. What? What was that? There's a lot of low end that you kind of dial away with this. I kind of understand why they had this because, uh, you know, Dimebag was uh, at first using the a modded Revolution 1. Uh, so they have this, where you can basically scoop out a lot of the shit in the mid range if you want. But I kind of like it like this. It's very Dimebag ish growl to it. And if I crank the level a little bit...
it's a lot of tune, okay. There you go, that's my little Arch Enemy Doomsday Machine tone video right there. I actually go back and reference listen a lot to this album while I'm mixing my own shit because I think it's a really well balanced uh, album. I'm just, you know, really fond of the sound and tone. Now in the notes they say they were probably blending this with a rectifier and whatnot. You know, I could have added a rectifier right here, but I wanted the Crank Rev 1 to shine in this because it's not, you know, I'm always playing with rectifiers, man, just saying. I think it sounds really, really good. It has that low mid growl that I really liked about the 90s Mel. This amplifier has that, and I think that's getting lost a lot today in modern productions. It sounds, you know, gritty and, and you know, low mid heavy. Love that tone. I have a little extra thing to announce here at the end of the video. This whole cabinet setup that I have here with the microphone and all of this that I made for the Doomsday Machine tone video. You can buy this impulse response from my website right now. It's available, so you can use it in any plugin, in any Axe Effects or Line 6 Helix or whatever. Just shove it in there. You can go purchase that on my website right now. How about that? I'll put a link in the description. You can buy it if you want it. And uh, I'll see you guys next time. How about that? Thank you. Jesus Christ! Vector! Jesus Christ!